Hi guys and welcome back to my channel Dentistry with Noor Saira. Today we will understand how to learn oral pathology in a very defined and a more productive way. If you are new to my channel and if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a video. Well, I created this video because I was getting a lot of requests on how to study oral pathology because I understand oral pathology is a very vast and a little difficult subject because you have to remember a lot of things. And there's not much information available on YouTube also which will help you guide on how to study oral pathology. So I have created a structured template which will help you study oral pathology in a more defined, structured and a more productive way. This will also help you achieve better grades in your exams because majority of the examiners look or are impressed by the framework or the structure of the answer. So let us move ahead and understand the framework first and then I will help you with a small mnemonic for you to remember this framework or the template and then we will talk about each heading in this framework and what to write uh, in your answer under each heading. Now I want you to write your answer of any question in oral pathology in the same manner that is write your framework first that is write the template first on the first page and then elaborate your answer under each heading on the next page this will significantly improve your marks in the exams as this is how examiners are impressed now the template is as follows that is definition epidemiology, etiopathogenesis, clinical features, investigation, differential diagnosis, treatment, and prognosis. Now to remember this, I have a small mnemonic for you that is deep CID thought process. Now D for definition, E for epidemiology, EP for etiopathogenesis, C for clinical features, I for investigation, D for differential diagnosis, thought for treatment and process for prognosis. Now this mnemonic that is deep CID thought process will help you remember the framework. Now let us move on further to understand each heading and what you should be writing under each heading. The first one is definition. Now, under the definition, the first thing you will do before writing the definition is classify the disease. That is, you will mention whether it is a pre-malignant lesion or if it is a skeletal developmental anomaly or if it is a skin disease or if it is an autoimmune disorder. So, you classify your disease. And then you will go ahead and remember this mnemonic that is DOC. That is D for classifying the disease. Then you write them the definition of the disease mentioned in your textbook and then you remember the other name of the disease now this is a significant thing that will improve your grades in your exam for example the other name of paget's disease is osteitis deformans now this will help the examiner understand that you have good knowledge about the subject. And second thing, if there is any available classification on the disease, you will write that here. If you can write the latest classification, that will help you fetch more marks. If you can write one or two more classifications for better grades. Well, this is about the definition. That is, first you will classify the disease. You will write other names for the disease. You will write the classification if available. If you want better grades, definitely write the most latest classification. And the mnemonic to remember this is DOC. Now, the second thing is epidemiology. Now, under epidemiology, I want you to remember this mnemonic that is GAP, which stands for gender, age, and a specific population in which the disease is very common. So this is the first two uh, headings and this is what you will be writing under the first two headings. Let us move on to the third heading that is etiopathogenesis. And uh, under etiopathogenesis, the first thing that you will write is what kind of a disease is this? Is it a hereditary or a non-hereditary disease? Is it a developmental disorder? Is it viral or bacterial? Is it autoimmune in nature? 
and once you have mentioned this down the next thing you will write is what is the cause of the disease that is if it's a genetic cause or if it is a virus or if it's a habit a specific habit that causes the disease now another thing that will really fetch marks for you is if you are able to mention which gene it is for example the gnas1 gene in your fibrous dysplasia or the virus which causes any viral infection uh, the specific virus for example hsv1 or hsv2 and if you're able to mention this this will seg- significantly improve your marks in the exam the next thing you will write if there is any mode of transmission of the disease for example in case of a viral infection droplet infection or in case of a bacterial infection if there is a sp- any mode of transmission that happens in this disease you can also write down that and then i want you to write down about pathogenesis of the disease uh, what is uh, how does the disease occur basically uh, that is after there is a gene uh, which is a defective gene which is present for example gnas1 gene what happens in fibrous dysplasia like there is an osteoblastic differentiation and maturation problem so you can write a little bit about that now what i'm trying to say is that you make headings and write stuff under it now that will give the examiner an idea that you know how to structure your answer and you have studied well now how do i remember all this the small mnemonic for that is when can mother pray w for what kind of a disease it is that is hereditary non hereditary developmental viral bacterial autoimmune c for what is the cause of the disease m for mode of transmission and p for what is the pathogenesis of the disease the next thing that you will write down are the clinical features of the disease the first thing i want you to write down on the clinical features is if they are any disease patterns or types for example fibrous dysplasia has four disease patterns like that of craniofacial monoostotic polyostotic and cherubism now i want you to write that down first and then you will write down the signs and symptoms of the disease now signs and sim- signs and symptoms signs is something that you identify in a patient and symptoms is something the patient represents with now under which you will classify your symptoms as prodromal and advanced now what is the meaning of prodromal symptoms is the symptoms that you find at the onset of the disease or which will help you understand this is just the beginning of the disease and advanced symptoms which occur in the later stage of the disease for example in case of oral submucous fibrosis you will see burning sensation in the mouth when consuming spicy food and you might see some blisters in the early onset of the disease and later on as the disease advances you will see that there is blanched an opaque oral mucosa which is present now once you have written down the prodromal symptoms and advanced symptoms in general i want you to make a separate heading for oral manifestations and write that down separately now under which first thing you you will mention is that if there is any specific jaw which is affected or a specific tooth which is affected or a specific intraoral part for example the tongue or the buccal mucosa or the gingiva which is affected now you will write all that down here and if you are looking to get better grades in the exam you can also mention the ratio of the part which is affected more for example in paget's disease the involvement of maxilla to mandible is approximately 2.3 is to 1 now this mentioning this in the exam will help the examiner understand that you have studied your subject really well after you have done this now don't ever forget to mention the pathognomic features of the disease and keywords for example shepherd crook appearance of the femur in fibrous dysplasia now the keyword to remember these are did she open the photos d for the disease pattern s for signs and symptoms o for oral manifestations and p for uh, pathognomic features now then we move on to the next uh, heading that is investigation now under investigations you will write down if there are any blood or or urine investigation that is necessary to be mentioned for example urinary hydroxyproline levels are elevated in a uh, paget disease and this is one of the classical features of paget disease and it's very important for you to mention that the next thing you will mention is the uh, radiographic features if any are available for example that of a rind sign which is seen in 
in uh, fibrous dysplasia and most importantly you will always mention the histopathological feature of the disease which is present in that specific disease now the mnemonic for you to remember this is behind rich history b for blood or urine investigation r for radiographic features and h for uh, histopathology the next thing you will write is the differential diagnosis of the disease that is you will mention if there are any other disease with similar presentation for example in cases of leukoplakia you can write a little bit about hyperplastic candidiasis or hairy leukoplakia or tobacco induced white lesions the next thing that you will write is about the treatment now i want you to classify the treatment as non surgical or surgical and under non surgical you can further classify it as if any chemotherapy or if it requires any radiotherapy for that disease and then you will write down what surgical therapies that are mentioned for that disease the next thing that you will write down is the prognosis and the most important thing that you can write under prognosis is the staging that is for example the tnm staging of carcinomas now this is how you will develop or write down the framework in your exam now this framework will not only help you fetch better grades in the exam but also this framework will help you study or pathology in a more structured and a more productive way now this will uh, help you develop a mental picture in your mind and help you retain and reproduce the information in a much better manner now i hope this video has been beneficial to you for more such videos please follow my channel dentistry with nursaira and if you haven't subscribed to it yet please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you're notified every time i upload a video thank you and have a good day